is the Mr. Beacon podcast here in Dublin at the Ticketing Technology Forum. And now we are actually out on the exhibition floor and you'll see that it's a quiet time because people are actually uh, listening to seminars, uh, but we're not. Uh, we are actually with Philip Hoyer, who's the CTO at uh, HID Global, and what's the division that you work in? Uh, Trusted Mobile Technology. Okay, so um, tell us, uh, for people that don't know HID, uh, what do you guys do? So HID is traditionally known for physical access control, so uh, the fact that you can go maybe gain access to physical resources, your office, uh, your hotel room, uh, your home. Uh, traditionally, with uh, readers such as these, where you would add an RFID card and you, uh, the reader would read the RFID card and then you gain access to your office or your badge. Um, Can we see one of those cards just so that people, uh, you, you so, got one around your neck, uh, yeah, so, physical one. So that's what we think of when we think HID, we think of that with an RFID tag in it, but you've now bought Blue Vision and so you You've got Bluetooth in there as well. So this is this is a special uh, active badge, yeah. which is both RFID and combines also a Bluetooth beacon that can then be used to either track the employee or to offer additional use cases that are interesting in terms of workspace management, in terms of understanding where people are, how many uh, uh, conference rooms are used, the utilization workspace utilization. Cool. But, um, um, so what are you doing at the ticketing conference? So we have now moved for a while, we have moved our access control technology into the mobile world. So you can, for example, have traditionally a, um, a wallet of access control virtual cards that allow you to go into your office or into a hotel room or access control. So I show you here the traditional HID mobile access application and here we see that we have a wallet of tickets both for entering an office so you would touch this phone on the reader and it would allow you access to the office mm -hmm. but now we're moving using the same technology that is proven for hotel rooms and office access into the ticketing world so here we have the concept of a multiple ticket and if we show you this this ticket now on a on an iPhone. We are going to show, uh, demonstrate how instead of using an HID reader, now you can use the ticket at another phone to verify the entry to an event, to an event for example. Here you will see the application with a fake event ticket. You will uh, you see that the ticket has maybe even a couple of ticket numbers in it. And now we will show you uh, the, the verification scenario where you have a verifier that verifies for a specific event the person slides up the ticket for it to be verified it connects and it has been now verified on the other phone this is a pure Bluetooth secure connection the other great thing is that on this phone you don't need a database of ticket numbers what is really happening is that a secure connection is happening between the two phones and the ticket here contains a signed payload that says I am a valid ticket for this specific event. So this gives now the opportunity for a few more interesting use cases. For example, the phone that holds the ticket knows that the ticket has been verified compared to a QR code where you just show the code and the phone has no idea if the reader has read it or not. This uh, allows, for example, automatic social media check-in. It allows the phone of the ticket holder to call back to the back end and says that he has been verified. It allows a new engagement with the ticket holder at the moment of verification. The other thing that we can do is because the communication is bi-directional, not like with a QR code only in one direction, a verifier or reader could write back a coupon, modify the ticket, etc. so that the experience within 
on the stadium that can be enriched. For example, the ticket holder could be given a coupon for free beer. Um, the ticket, also being Bluetooth technology, can potentially be extended to allow things like proof of ingress. So, for example, when you don't have a physical barrier to access control, the ticket can act as a privacy-enabled secure beacon that can be detected by a Bluefi device, which is a bridge between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and connects to the Bluefi cloud. And so that Bluefi comes from Blue Vision, which is this company that you bought. Correct. So with Blue Vision is now uh, an addition to the HID family. We really thought that the Bluetooth location services, the fact that uh, the beacons themselves and that technology is a wonderful addition to the HID family, both in the physical access control where we have situations where people want to know, for example, in cases of fire or emergency where people are or how many, how many people have exited the building. They also want to know the real uh, estate uh, utilization, the workspace utilization, understand how people uh, behave or move within a building. Matter of fact, if you see the, uh, the Blue Zone uh, cloud service, you can track, for example, where a specific uh, uh, um, tag or badge is. Yeah. So I would, for example, show you that this specific um, beacon, which is a visitor badge, which I said, is here in the location of the Dublin Ticketing Forum and here you see the floor plan and where we are here at the moment and that the badge has been here. So you've basically just plugged in four of those blue fires at power sockets around the... Around the hall, the exhibitors hall, and they will then track potentially, if it is enabled, either the, bla the badge, the beacon, or a, a tracking enabled ticket on the phone if we wanted to. But it's important to note that it's not any uh, phone or device that can simply track it. There's a lot of cryptography and privacy enabled um, cryptography going on so that only authorized devices can actually track right. what we want so to track. So we've got that uh, amber kind of mark there that indicates where one device is. Correct. And But you might want to say we want to look at if that person where how it moved within the um, within the uh, space in the last few hours okay so we can easily have a history of that specific uh, beacon or credential over the last few hours and you see here by zooming in that I was quite diligent and was actually always in the <laughs> you are working hard I mean you probably straight from the booth at all. That's right. So the other thing that we can do, which is quite interesting for the ticketing situation, is we can position just one of them and create a policy that says that if a ticket or a badge comes into the vicinity of it from a range of meters, then you would create a, an event or a notification or an alert. So in this case, for example, I have created a policy that says if a beacon is at the proximity of the HID stand here and it will then generate an alert if the badge was effectively coming into the vicinity. So imagine, Stephen, that you would have a VIP or a specific guest and they would come in through the entrance and the event organizer could be um, notified that that person has arrived without having to actually go through an access control perspective because the blue fire would detect the presence of that person. Very cool. So, yeah, just ahead. before we uh, wrap up, you've got some other toys here. We've got a bit of a 
uh, of a hotel door. How does that come into play with all of this? So this is utilizing exactly the same technology, which is, a, if we look at the schematics here, we have three pieces to our solution. We have a cloud system, we have a secure wallet on the phone, which protects the different keys, tickets, etc. And then we have the way for that phone to interact with the readers on another phone. So here we have an example of using that with a key that opens a hotel lock. So this is an iPhone. We know that it's, it's, it, we cannot uh, utilize the NFC. So this is a pure Bluetooth-based solution. And as you can see now, the door is open. So imagine in a situation for a venue, like a sporting venue, where you have, uh, for example, a VIP lounge or a box, then you could have the ticket on the phone also opening that area or opening the private you know, resources, uh, let's say, of the, of the VIP lounge. Very cool. So they're just using their phone. You could have someone checking into the hotel and going right. straight to their room, all that stuff. Our sister um, group in Asa Ablo is already using that in hotels around the world, specifically if you uh, log in or if you uh, check into a SPG property such as the W or the Western Hotel, uh, check out its uh, SPG themed, this uh, capability SPG keyless. So YouTube or Google SPG keyless, you see some very cool videos of how the HID Asablo technology is being used on phones to unlock rooms in hotels worldwide. And we were having a little bit of a back and forth about this. So, so technically that's not a beacon, it's using some Bluetooth smart adver advertisements and then it's establishing a, a connection. Correct. It's, 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 it uses Bluetooth smart it, and what we have done, we have a secure transfer technology that creates effectively a mutual authentication over Bluetooth between the phone and the reader or the lock and then allows the secure transmission of the key or the ticket to the verifying device, be it a lock, be it a reader or mm -hmm. So we're here really because we think that with this technology we're looking for partners to create a better engagement of the user that always has the phone with them and get away from QR codes and we believe that with this technology we open up use cases and experiences that are more entertaining, more frictionless for the actually the punter or the, the fan attending an event. Wonderful. I think that's really compelling. Philip Hoyer of HID Global, thanks so much. Thank you.